internets, I'm Michael and this is To Can Play That Game. We have a paid preview of the Pioneers program by GCT Studios. So what is it? Well, let's take a look at the box here. We have a priest and a guy with these gritted teeth and then a baby and just these hordes of mutated monsters. So a bit of a mishmash of all sorts of things that doesn't really tell us a whole lot. Well, what the theme actually is, is that you are a leader of a settlement in ARK's Pioneers program, trying to have the most successful town in this kind of post-apocalyptic wasteland. And that's why there's obviously mutants around and stuff. What this actually translates to gameplay-wise is a Euro-esque grab for victory points, made up of city building, resource management, with just a smidge of role selection and a light sprinkling of combat on top, just for spice. Each round, you will select a survivor to act as your deputy. This affects turn order, combat strength, and also gives you a unique power to use each round. Now, each round you will take actions ranging from building structures to build up your town, gaining victory points as your town gets larger, to researching new technologies which will gain you victory points, recruiting personalities to gain you victory points. But everything you do in this game is going to cost you response tokens. These are a form of resource that represents the time you have to do everything in, and you'll need to balance this with the actions that you're performing. And then as if that wasn't enough, many of the cards that you're putting into play will have upkeep costs that you need to worry about. And if you don't play those costs, you'll lose the cards. And it's made even harder when other players can send mutant hordes to attack your town or simply raiding you themselves thereby destroying your structures or stealing resources for themselves so obviously there's a lot going on in this game there's a lot to kind of think about and be aware of and if you are interested in finding out more about how the game actually plays then do watch my how to play video that is linked in the description so let's now talk about my thoughts on the game. Well, component-wise, nothing is finalised. This is a paid preview of a Kickstarter product, so I'm going to leave that alone. However, the art is pretty much done. But as always, art is subjective. Now, personally, I really like the cartoon style they've gone for. I mean, you look at the box, and what you see on the box carries on consistently through the entire game. You see it on all the cards, you see it on the game board. It just helps to reinforce that theme wherever you look, of the whole wasteland, what's going on, that you're building up this town. Now, with the gameplay, the strategic decisions just start immediately in this game with the setup, with the fact that you're drafting your starting cards. I love this as a mechanic. It keeps some of the randomness of luck of the draw without making it completely random. And I don't know why more games don't choose to do this. The addition of these alarms is a fantastic addition to the gameplay in this game. Just having that slight small variation on when the game will actually end just adds this lovely element of surprise when you, you know, you don't know just how long you've got to kind of, right, well then I can do this, then I can do that. You don't know. And I like that. It means that you can do a bit of planning. You know, right, it's going to be somewhere around those three turns. But you can't rely on, right, I'm going to have that extra turn, I'm going to have that extra turn. You know, but at the same time, because it's not, right, this is your final round, you're always going to know, right, I can use this round to build towards that final round. So it's really well done, really interesting, and not a mechanic I've actually seen in any other game. The whole way through, this game presents you with some really tight, brain burny decisions, because you never have enough resources to do everything that you want to do, especially actions and turns. But it achieves this without having a huge level of complexity to it. It's actually a reasonably simple game. You know, new gamers are going to be able to pick up and play this reasonably easily, but at the same time, because of that brain burniness, there's enough strategic depth there to engage veteran gamers. 
as well as this, there is a good amount of luck, which means that a veteran gamer isn't just going to run away with the game. You have those waste deck draws, which even that you can mitigate somewhat because you can choose the survivor that allows you to draw two cards and pick which one you want to take. So there's still then an element of strategy if you're wanting to go down that route of going for those waste cards. And then you have the combat dice just adding an element of unknown to the game, a bit of suspense and excitement that you just don't know what's going to happen when an attack does occur. However, there is much more strategy than luck in this game because as I said even like the luck of the draw you can mitigate that somewhat combat you can mitigate those luck of the dice by using your response tokens by taking the role that gives you more attack a lot of city building games lack interaction and that's where that attack really really helps this game because the fact that you can play attacks on other people that you can raid other people just means that there is so much interaction going on or at least the threat of interaction you never know if someone's going to attack you or raid you and you don't even have to wait for the random luck of the draw to be able to do that to a player because there's a survivor you can take that will allow you to raid other players what i like most about the combat about the attacking in this game is that the majority of those cards the better a player is doing, you know, the bigger their town is, the more resources they have, etc., the harder it is for them. So you have to balance that building yourself quickly and making yourself a target because you're vulnerable to attacks and have part of your building being getting combat in order to counteract and protect yourself. It just adds an extra layer of decision making to what would be just an ordinary town building game. Also adding to the interaction in this game is of course the event cards. And these do all sorts of different things that can affect one player to affecting all the players. So you really do never know how someone else's turn is going to affect your own plans. And I think all of this combines to really help the fact that there is no clear path to victory. I've played a lot of games of this and there's been no, right, doing this will get you the win. Doing this will get you the win. You know, it's just a factor of playing the game based on what those other players are doing. You know, if someone's heavily attacking, etc., you need to build yourself to defend against that. There is no single, if I do this, I will win. You need to be aware of what the other players are doing, what's coming up in the market. You need to react to the game. You can't just go into the game playing it the same way every time. It really does depend what is happening in that single game. Which, of course, also means that there is a huge amount of replay value in this. Because each game you play has these turning points that build from one to the other. The perfect example of which is those HQ cards and how you can choose to go for the civil or martial route. But the game has those decisions less obviously throughout the entire gameplay. Now, the box doesn't state this, the box says this is for three to six players, but this being two can play that game, I do want to talk about it, and that is of course two players. Now, I have tried this at two players, and the game does work, the game is fun. Yes, it is better when you have more players, when you have that more risk of interaction, more things you need to be aware of, more people who might attack each other or play event cards. But it does work and it is fun as a two player game. So in summary, this is a simple game, yet it has tight choices, an interesting theme and plenty to keep all types of gamers engaged. It will probably be most popular with people who have liked things such as Imperial Settlers or 51st State, you know, that kind of city building with the risk of attacking there. But it has a wide market there and you will probably enjoy this game if you try it. So I do hope that you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. And of course if you have, please do check out the rest of the videos on the channel as well as subscribing to the channel and sharing it with your friends and family. And do also take a look at us on social media, you can find us on Facebook and on Twitter. And as always, thanks for watching and bye for now.